Father, we thank you again for this church body. We thank you for all those who you've brought. We thank you, Father, for your sustaining provision for us. We thank you for the compelling vision you've given us. Pray, Lord, that you would help us to live into it more and more each day. And as we discuss the operational and kind of strategic sides of our church, Lord, I pray that this would help unite us in vision, fuel us with passion, humble us to be dependent on you for guidance and direction. Bless our conversation now, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so annual meeting. This is where uh, traditionally we vote on the budget for the upcoming year. But we want to take uh, this time to just kind of look over what's happened in the past year, talk a little bit about what we're going to work on this year. So Josh will do that. And then we'll uh, finish up with discussion on the budget um, and then a vote. And uh, before we do that, we need to approve the minutes from last year's congregational annual meeting, which were in your uh, handout before that you could receive. And so uh, I need a motion to accept the minutes from last year's annual meeting. Thank you. Second? Thank you very much. Any discussion, edits, questions about the minutes from last year? We give you about 10 minutes to think about that, and then we will <laughs> Ten vote. seconds. Ten, oh, seconds, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said minutes on purpose. We do want to get home at some yeah. point. Yeah. Any questions, though, seriously? All right. All in favor of passing the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, passes, second time in one day. <laughs> so that's that. Now we're going to turn over to Josh, who's going to kind of give a report on the year, and we'll go from there. Okay, so again, thank you for being here. I'm looking at the camera and saying thank you to people who are listening, watching. Uh, this is a, still a very different time that we're in. Uh, our bylaws never envisioned uh, remote video business meetings, you know, but that's kind of what we need to do to connect with as many of our members as possible. So those that are watching, you have the ability to, to vote on our budget as well uh, through email or phone call or mailing this in. Uh, so just thank you for connecting and um, engaging. So here's... Here's what I want to do. I want to think with you just a little bit about why we do what we do, uh, why we exist, who we are, and then some overview and highlights of last year and then this coming year. Here's who we are. Our mission, what we're called to, is to build a community that loves Christ to influence a community for Christ. That's our, that's our mission. We filter every decision through that. It's not just in a file cabinet somewhere. It's what we're called to, and we, I really believe this. Um, that part of building community, loving Christ, the influencing, the broader community for Christ, all about that. Uh, our values, who we are, uh, there's really six with a seventh that I've kind of added. Uh, and we could walk through and spend a lot of time on each of these, but just briefly, biblical bedrock, you will not come to a service here at church where we do not base everything on God's word. Our goal is really that this is our bedrock, that every time we gather central to what we do is, is basing everything on the Lord's word, trusting it, believing it. Uh, we per, are pursuing vibrant worship. Vibrant worship being defined as when we gather, we recognize a living God is present here. There's lots of ways we can gather in a community. Uh, if we are a church, we stand apart from every other way because uh, we're focusing on the glory of God and we recognize he's present here in a special way when we gather in his name. Uh, and then uh, compelling teamwork, personal growth, scattered influence, loving service. Those are all ways that we want to be community. And I've added a seventh core value, which is creation awareness. I think we live in a pretty great place. Amen. The Northwoods is a pretty spectacular place. And part of who we are as a church is, I think, in part defined by 
our environment, our, the creation awareness that we have, that God made this and it stirs our hearts to praise is like part of our identity. So I, I would call that a, a, a seventh core value. Uh, our vision is to be a healthy church family of influence. Um, so the vision, uh, the next slide, is uh, to be a healthy church family of influence for Christ. Last week, one of the points in Ruth and Naomi was that friendship is possible within family. Um, I think more and more, many of us would say, really? I can hardly see that in my fractured and broken family. I can hardly see that in the fractured and broken families that surround me. But in Christ, friendship is possible within family. Friendship, uh, kingdom friendship and a healthy church is possible as we pursue the Lord together. And I think if we can be families that trust the Lord for that, more and more we're going to shine as lights in the darkness. So that's really our pursuit is uh, to be a healthy church family of influence for Christ. Uh, some overview of this past year for you. Some of this is in my report, but just briefly. Uh, next slide. Uh, is that we came through the sermon series in the book of Luke. Probably my favorite sermon series that I've preached through in 11 going on 12 years. Uh, year and a half. As I was getting near the end of the sermon series, I was getting a little anxious. Like, I don't want this to end, you know. Uh, I really loved Luke. Uh, so we spent a year and a half in Luke all through the pandemic and the election and uh, the unrest and all this stuff. Just Luke. Just what's going on in Jesus' life every week. Loved it. Um, it was one, personally, um, it was one of the hardest years ever for me. And I think for a lot of us, if I were to sit down over coffee with you and just share for a couple hours, I could share with you about how 2018 and 2021 were two of the more difficult years in my own life. And I think for, for us as a community in some ways, um, that's been true for 2021 and 2020. It's a difficult time. It's hard to even put a finger on how COVID and pandemic and the decisions we have to make and the people that we've lost and the tragedies we've faced and the uncertainty, it's, it's, it's almost hard to overstate how much that has impacted us. Uh, and so this was a hard year. I just think we can, we can say that. But in this last year, uh, we've continued to do this. <laughs> Show up. <laughs> just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep loving Jesus. Uh, keep being people of faith. Uh, I believe that we're just relentlessly committed. Our call from the Lord is to be relentlessly committed to loving Jesus and put one foot in front of the other. And that stability, that presence, is, it, it, it has its way. It, God uses us in that way in this community. Uh, welcoming new people. Loving and supporting our church family through the surrounding, uh, through the ups and downs of life, the real ups and the real downs of life. Loving the surrounding community through a lot of their ups and downs in families with, with funerals and losses and baptisms and weddings and new beginnings and dedications. Favorite Sunday of the year might have been doing a couple of dedications, <laughs> like just amazing seeing new life. Uh, next steps in life, and on and on and on the list goes, just showing up, trusting Jesus. I, I really count that to be one of the um, highlights of this last year, just continuing to be faithful. Um, other things in this last year, uh, we were able to pay off uh, our mortgage for this facility. Praise the Lord. Holy moly. Such a huge deal. It's a massive deal. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, that's God providing through you, your generosity, your faithfulness, the way you give. Um, we have committed to a, a church campus, to plant a church campus in Rhinelander and partner with Highland Community Church to do that. That was a commitment that we began in uh, 2021 and uh, Lord willing, we'll see it come into fruition and begin in 2022. Uh, that really follows the overall mission of our denomination, which is to multi multiply transformational churches among all peoples. 
Uh, we transitioned away from a Saturday service and a Sunday morning service to two Sunday morning services. That's a diff- that was a difficult process, difficult decision. It was prayerfully made, and we're excited about how that, Rob mentioned it in, the, in his message, about how that brings us together and stirs uh, deeper relationships and ongoing community. Uh, we have added three part-time staff and, in a sense, a fourth full-time staff position. Let me explain this. Uh, part-time tech director, part-time women's ministry and connections director, part-time children's ministry administrative assistant. Uh, Jay Cropeland, Cynthia Stevens, Holly Kazuski have all uh, said yes to those positions, those part-time positions here at church. We've also added half a year of the Rhinelander campus pastor position in our uh, in our budget for this coming year. Half a year of full-time pay, or as Jeff Kraft said after last service, a full year of part-time pay. Um, But really, it's half a year of full-time pay. Uh, So those positions have increased um, that portion of our budget, and we're excited about that as we look forward. I'm mixing mixing times of looking back and looking forward. Uh, Let's go to the next slide. So looking ahead, uh, we've added those positions Uh, We're excited about the priorities that we have within discipleship and leadership. Uh, Let me talk about the worship pastor for a second. Um, uh, This this last year, uh, Pastor Zach and the worship team and myself processing together next steps. Zach and Erica, the Fultonowskis, their call to move back to Michigan. uh, Our call to begin to look for a new worship pastor. Uh, It's hard to overstate how huge that is in the day-to-day, like, leadership responsibilities that, that I oversee in our church. So uh, pray about that, will you? I, in my estimation, the Rhinelander campus and the, the next worship pastor are probably the two biggest things that kind of weigh on me just a little bit, praying that the Lord really moves. I'm excited about, about this. Sad, uh, there's some sadness around Zach and Erica leaving. We love them. Uh, I'm excited about what the Lord has in store as we trust him. Um, so uh, next week is, is Zach's last week with us. We're going to pray for him and send him off. Uh, the week after that, I'm going to go down to um, uh, Southern Michigan, and I'm going to visit uh, a church where we believe we've identified the next worship candidate. We think we may have identified him. I'm trying not to hold, like, grip that too tight because you got to keep praying about that. You know, we're just going through the process, kind of in the dating phase, if you will, of, like, the hiring process. You know, we've got to just... Say, okay, Lord, is this the right fit for us? But I'm going to go visit him on February 6th, and then he's going to come up here and candidate with us on February 13th. So be praying for that. If we could fill that, that role soon, that would be a, a, massive, a massive thing for us as we look at uh, 2022. Um, and then just the, the way we build community, our overall missions expansion, those are things we're going to take a team to um, uh, Slovakia this summer. I'm excited about that and the way that we fulfill our mission in the Lord in this coming year. Um, as I look back, one more thing, as I look back on last year, I have to mention just the way the Lord blessed us as a family with Claire's wedding. Claire, Mar- our oldest, marrying Dylan Galliano. She's now Galliano. You know, you, you made somebody another ribby, you know, I'm... Galliano's made somebody another Galliano. We lost a Reese. You gained a Ribby. We lost a Reese. Uh, but we gained a son-in-law, which is awesome. So uh, excited about that in our family. Um, so that's my update as I kind of, you can read my report as I kind of look at the, the landscape of what's happening in our community of faith. I really, really see the Lord at work through some awesome, the interaction of our staff and our team. Uh, through the ministries like like benevolence and missions and youth and 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 you you can read the report Uh, thank you for giving uh, Kay and I an opportunity. February 1st, uh, we'll be celebrating our third year here, which seems crazy that we've already been here three years. Trusting the Lord to work in this area of discipleship. Uh, 
our watchword, you, we kind of have our mission statement, uh, being a community that loves Christ, influence community for Christ, but our, our watchword is becoming a church of discipleship, and that means at every single level, discipleship is going on, as Rob talked about, Elijah raising up his Elisha. We want that to be happening at every level of ministry. Uh, for example, our, uh, our staff. We want our staff to be purposely thinking about eventually even maybe perhaps who's going to replace me. Uh, if you are interested in the basic philosophy that we have toward discipleship, there are a hundred good books on discipleship out there. This helps us and has helped us as a church develop a common language so we all know what we're talking about. It's called Real Life Discipleship by a guy named Jim Putman. Their whole church was developed on a discipleship model. Uh, that's our hope and that means that for example, it's not that you can't hire outside. We're going to hire outside. They hired me from outside. But do you always have to hire from outside? Why can't you trust God with the people he has brought you into this community to raise up the next whatever? And one of the exciting things about what we just did in adding those three part-time staff is they are all from within. We didn't have to look from without. Laura is a from within hire. And we want to just have that mentality that perhaps God is bringing people here into our community that we can raise and develop and become that next whatever. So at the staffing level, that's what we want to be doing. Everybody we are uh, helping to guide, uh, as the elders, for example, the elders are intentionally looking for those uh, next people that they can raise up and develop and help perhaps develop the next elder. Uh, council members, our encouragement is every single council member should be looking at how can I reproduce myself so that if God calls me somewhere else, there's a very easy transition into uh, for that next person to take the responsibilities that God has given me. Uh, continually encouraging at every council meeting, uh, what are your, your job isn't just benevolence. Your job isn't just hospitality. Your job, your job is to find the next director of whatever it is you're doing. Uh, the ministry I'm responsible for, adult ministries, we're looking at things like the men's ministry. I shouldn't have to do everything that the men's ministry wants to do. Uh, exciting part about that, in two weeks we're going to have a men's ministry team uh, lead, or, uh, meeting. We've got a group of about eight guys who have committed themselves to giving direction to the men's ministry. We've hired on Cynthia Stevens. Her first job, as we've talked, is developing a women's team. She's got definitely five and perhaps two or three others who are going to gather together on a regular basis to develop ministry to women. We've got the seniors ministry, uh, our wonderful uh, Marguerite DeGraw mid-90s, and she said, I am not done. God is not done with me. She's developed a team around herself to give ministry to leadership to that. We have a library team. We have 20 small groups to get involved in. Pastor David, uh, his goal isn't just to make Wednesday night the youth ministry. His goal is to develop a team of people that will take the youth ministry and make it their own. He's got individual small group leaders. Uh, he doesn't work with every single student. He works with the leaders, they work with the students. We want to encourage every student to see themselves as a potential leader. Uh, the, the watchword there is uh, staff directed but student led. Every leadership position should be filled by a student. Our goal is empowering leaders. We had an awesome opportunity at Honey Rock to take 25 of our potential leaders uh, a couple months ago and train them at Honey Rock in some basic servant leader type um, content. We're going to reproduce that again in a couple months and do that again and begin investing in our leaders and really turning them loose and telling them we trust you to lead in the way that God has called you to lead. So, uh, it's exciting. Uh, lots and lots uh, to continue with and we want to encourage at every level that you just don't see the people that you've hired as a church to do this, 
the, this book talks about three threes, basically. That a disciple is someone who follows Christ, is being transformed by Christ, and influences others for Christ. We do that in a relational environment. I can't disciple someone that I'm not in a relationship with. But I'm intentional in that relationship. I just don't hope it happens. I make it happen. And I'm intentionally working with that person to bring them to the next level. And it's reproducible. I know that I'm a successful discipler when my disciples are making disciples. Mm. And that's the measure. And we do that in a loving environment. When people come into this place, we just want to make sure they know they're loved. We want to grow together. One of the things about the, Saturday, or the Sunday morning now is that we can grow together, we can develop community, we can develop some relationships that maybe we weren't able to do that. And that we do that by going. And I always say that the going does not mean you have to travel over a body of salt water. The going is wherever you happen to be, Jesus said make disciples. Everybody's got to be somewhere. So wherever you are, have that as your intent as you move forward. Uh, if you want this book, it, it'll be my gift to you. I'd love to give it to you to give you some tracks to run on. Uh, or to just understand what it is we're trying to develop here at St. Germain Free Church. And I am, and Kay uh, together are just incredibly privileged to be a part. Awesome, thanks. Bam. That know, was good. Right? Sermon two for the day. Yeah. No extra charge. <laughs> uh, are there any, before we go to the budget uh, part of the conversation, is there anything about the ministries, about what Tom or Josh have said relative to last year, year ahead? Just want to open up space for any questions that you might have or thoughts. Yep. So where can get info on Rhineland Church Plant? Well, it really is right now kind of limited in what we have to share. There's not a lot to share right now. There's a lot happening kind of behind the scenes. Uh, there's a core group of eight, four from our church, four from Highland, that have been meeting together, working on things like, you know, the governance of it, some of the details behind it, some of the groundwork stuff you got to do. There's been a group of 20 to 30 or so people that have met and started to pray together. If you're interested in that, we're kind of letting that be a little bit more grassroots, and we're not just inviting crazy numbers of people. It's those people that would like this would be their church. You know, this would be their, their right in the Rhinelander area. Uh, this is where they would go. This is the campus that they would go to. So there was a first meeting, prayer meeting, uh, January 9th, and they'll continue to be those in person the second Sunday of every month in person. So if you're interested in that, let us know. We're just not, like, it's not a church service yet. It's not like the doors are open to the public yet. We're still praying about that, a key thing is going to be hiring a worship slash campus pastor. That's going to be a big part of taking those next steps to it being a little bit more of a public, let's open the doors, and we've got to find a location, and we, we don't have that. So that's kind of where we're at. I mean, we really think that there can be some traction and momentum that builds and builds and builds moving through this year until we could potentially launch in the fall of this year. But totally have to trust the Lord's timing. And um, hiring a worship pastor here next is kind of a next big thing in my own. Like, I got to, like, that's the thing I'm praying and working toward. And then it's like, once that happens, I can kind of, I personally can kind of shift gears a little bit more. But thank the Lord, I'm not the one, like Tom said, uh, I'm not the one making Rhinelander campus happen. It's not on me. Uh, it's really a group of people and God working through that group of people. That meeting that happened January 9th, I wasn't even at that. I didn't help, you know, in many ways, I didn't hardly even help coordinate that. Uh, Tom was a part of it, you know, a couple other key people. So um, I'm excited, I'm hopeful, but there's not tons and tons. That's about as much as, you know, we know right now. So, and if you, and again, if you are interested, talk to me, talk to Tom if you want to be a part of those prayer meetings in person in Rhinelander on the second Sunday of the month. But we're, this is even more than I really, you know, I mean, we're not like broadcasting that and inviting just uh, the public. Other questions? Yeah. Nancy, 
Uh, here, we're get, grab that microphone because we're going to probably be recording this. So, yeah. Uh, with the women's ministry director, I'm just curious as to why we are going to have a paid position for it. No men's ministry director. Just kind of get me on that. Well, on your mindset. Tom has really functioned as like, I mean, he's a man and uh, he's directing men's and women's ministries. And you've got some real clear direction in a paid position there. Um, there's enough women, enough opportunity, enough need that uh, Cynthia and I have been talking for the last couple years. I think she's a good fit for that. We're going to try this this year, give this a shot. The other portion of her role is connections, meaning how can we foster better family environment, better hospitality, better welcoming in our community. I think Cynthia is kind of in a good place to be able to give some direction to women's ministry and to connections. So that's, it kind of happened a little organically. Sometimes it's a chicken and an egg thing. Did the position happen first and then you found a person to fill it? Or did you see this person and think of the position that they could fill? It's a little bit of both of that with Cynthia and I'm really grateful for her. So if you get to know Cynthia Stevens in the in the near future. She's been a blessing to me and to our church. So we're going to try it with her this year and see how it goes. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Thanks. Todd. Todd is a elder director at Fort Wilderness. There's a little bit of camp emphasis <laughs> up here this morning. Camp, camp. Uh, but, uh, Great gift to us in helping lead the whole financial team. Uh, so go ahead, Todd. All right, I was going to say good morning because it's 11.59, but it'll soon be afternoon. So, <laughs> um, it's a privilege to serve up here. I'm speaking really on behalf of Janie Blazier and Dwight Kimber, who do 98% of all the work in this area. So thank you to them for putting us in this position. Uh, God's plans include his provision, and we have a lot of praises to thank the body for responding to how the Lord's working through St. Germain and all the exciting plans that Josh, Rob, Tom, and others have spoke about. Giving was up $60,000 or 9% above budget. Now, entering into a pandemic and uncertainties around what does church look like, that is a tremendous praise that uh, that happened, which, as Josh mentioned, allowed us to accelerate paying off an additional $47,000 or a total of $84,000 in the mortgage, which is now uh, concluded. And thus, we ended the year in a surplus, which is a real great praise. Not only that, as Josh mentioned, we have a reserve. I won't try to, I thought, well, Josh is an accountant. I'm an accountant by background, but uh, this half year, part-time, full-time, whatever, <laughs> We have a reserve of $65,000 established in advance for that campus pastor. Yeah. For budgeting purposes, obviously we're in January, he has not hired, so we just said we'll anticipate spending half of it this year. It could be two-thirds, it could be a third, we don't know when they'll start, but we'd be hopeful they'd be starting sometime this year, and when they do, we have a reserve for one year's worth of their salary already in advance, so that's a great praise. We have over $300,000 of operating cash in the bank, which is healthy, and we have reserves of another $250,000, of which $56,000 is for the building maintenance and funds to continue to take good care of this building, and then we have some reserves for benevolence and missions and other various projects as well. So we're in a really strong financial position, and we're thankful for that. I'd like to transition to the budget, and then we'll entertain questions. Um, next year's budget is $751,000. Of that budget amount, $32,500 is half a year for the campus pastor at Rhinelander. So what that means is that basically the general fund giving, what comes from the body of Christ through St. Germain, is about $718,000, which is effectively what we received this year. So that's conservative. I mentioned earlier that we had a 9% increase in giving last year to this year, but when we budget, we want to be conservative. So we're anticipating a similar uh, giving as the prior year. Our expenses are $750,000, so it's a balanced budget, and that includes several of the positions that Josh mentioned, the Ryan Lander Church Plant, the audio video technician, Cynthia Stevens position, and then some modest expense increases in facilities and ministry expenditures. And also one of the things that we've talked about as elders recently is 
how can we continue to be more intentional with outreach with respect to all the ministry needs of this greater community? So that's something we really want to be intentional. We don't, it's not the goal to be a bank. We want to invest in the kingdom of God through St. Germain, through the Northwoods. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing the Rhinelander Church Plant. We want to expand God's vision for this community. It requires faithful servants like all of you and this body to come alongside sport. And you've been very faithful in doing that. So that's an abbreviated version of the 2021 results and the 2022 budget. There's lots of numbers in there. Most people don't enjoy the numbers as much as I do, <laughs> but I'm glad to talk about any individual things that you'd like. So, Any questions about the budget? We'll give more than 10 seconds. Okay, sure. 18 seconds. <laughs> Any? Don't want to rush, but don't want to. All right. Thank you, Todd. Todd has been a huge blessing to us within the elder group, connecting with Janie and Dwight regularly and helping us kind of understand as the elders our situation and where we're going. So thanks, Todd. I appreciate you. So we need someone to make a motion to accept the 2022 budget. Thank you. Second? Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion, questions? We kind of already had that time, but this is the place where you're supposed to put it in. All right. For voting, you fill out the little sheet that was passed to you. If you did not get one and you're a member, please uh, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Uh, and then we'll have people that can collect them. Uh, you do not have to put your name on the bottom if you don't want to, but this is for members to vote. So we are also collecting, as Josh said at the beginning, votes online, phone call, or send in from those that are watching online. Um, so I encourage you to do so quickly, and then we'll let you know next week about whether the budget passed or not. Can I have a couple people just collect these? You can hand them to the sides, and we'll collect them. Um, I'll, I'll volunteer myself. While Josh is doing that, are there any other questions or thoughts that we want to bring up before we adjourn? Thank you. Here, I'm going to give them to you to give to Harvey. Okay. Uh, I could, well, whatever. Here, I can give them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Josh will pray for us as we head out. Now that he's back up here. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it. We'll let... Oh, we, do we need to do a motion to adjourn? Yeah. You're supposed Jeanette, to. Jeanette Kraft isn't here, so somebody else has Somebody to. wants to make a motion to adjourn. Yep. Thank you. Shady. Second. Yep, Thank you. Go. All in favor of that? Aye. All right. All right. Josh can pray now. Okay. All right. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, on this chilly Sunday... We know that, Lord, you are a creator. You bring the seasons. Uh, it's, it's a little darker in the winter, a little brighter in the summer, all because of the way you made uh, the universe and this world. And we just trust you. Uh, we trust you with our lives that you truly know us and love us and that you have made our way um, through the person of Jesus Christ, his, his life and death and resurrection. And we trust you. We trust him. And so thank you for all that you are doing. Lord, there are times when, it's, when life is just uh, hard or sad or confusing. And uh, I pray that we as a church can be there for those times, uh, for people that are going through them uh, with tears or difficulty or brokenness. Uh, on the flip side, Lord, thank you for being able to appreciate laughter and friendship and joy together. Uh, thanks for allowing us to be a community to trust you and, and go through those um, times of celebration and uh, thanksgiving together. So Lord, allow us to just continue to be who you've called us to be, faithful to you. And I pray, I lift up this budget to you, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would provide. I pray for all of the needs that we have from discipleship to uh, the Rhinelander campus plans, to the provision of another worship pastor. 
Lord, I pray that you would provide and give us wisdom and discernment uh, as to how to take those next steps. Um, so thank you again today for this time. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.